Hello participants, friends. Today we will be discussing about a very important aspect and that is environmental management system. In brief, we call it as EMS. Now, environmental management system, it is critically important for natural resource management as well. And when we discuss about NRM, we must know about EMS because an appropriate environment management is critical for natural resource management as well. An environmental management system is basically a set of processes and practices that enable an organization or group to reduce its environmental impact and at the same time increase its operating efficiency. It is a framework, EMS is a framework that helps an organization or a group community in achieving its environmental goals like green environment, good water, good soil, suitable amount of biodiversity. These are the different environmental goals through a consistent review evaluation and improvement of its environmental performance. When we say environmental performance, it means that the resources that we will be utilizing for our sustainable living in any community or any locality, we need to see that that utilization of these natural resources is optimum and we are also taking care of its regeneration wherever it is possible. So, the utilization of natural resources will be in sync with the environment management. Now, when we say about this consistent review, this consistent review and evaluation identifies the opportunities for improving and also implementing the environmental performance of that community or organization or group. Now, there is a international organization for standardization which we call as ISO. Many of you might be knowing about this. ISO developed an international standard which is followed by certain numbers like ISO 14001 here which is does is specifies the requirements for environmental management system. It tells us that how and what should be the approach and it also gives us certain numbers and values which should be followed if we are trying to do appropriate implementation of a, that particular ISO system under environment management system. And EMS is developed in compliance with the ISO 14001 standard as a part of the organizational strategy for what to implement this environmental policy and to address the government regulation. Like many other countries in India also we have various environmental uh, regulations rule and also we have a tribunal national green tribunal. I am sure most of you have heard about that we call it in brief NGT very powerful authority to protect our environment. An EMS approach also incorporates the periodic review by top management and emphasizes the continuous improvement instead of emergency management or crisis management. Means because of suppose our continuous utilization or extraction of a certain natural resources from the ecosystem if there is a negative impact on the environment suddenly happens and we go that and manage that kind of a emergency purpose that is not the objective of EMS. What we need to do is that we need to have a consistent review of the process so that that kind of emergency situation should not even arrive. So, in a sense prevention is better than cure. So, we need to be prepared through consistent review evaluation of the system because we know that natural resources we will be needing, we will be continuously using it, but how, when and how much 
that needs to be actually reviewed and accordingly the system should be managed. Now, EMS as I said that it follows uh, certain, certain uh, ISO standard uh, like ISO 14001 is a very standard model of environment you know improvement. ISO 14001 follows the plan do check act. We call it PDCA model plan, you plan your action, you do or carry out, you cross check that how it is working, if there is any fault, act, implement. So, this PDCA model of improvement under ISO 14001 is very, very important for appropriate environment management and so natural resource management. It is a kind of a iterative or repeating process which must be applied regularly to ensure the benefits are being realized and also at the same time the standard is maintained. Now, let us see how this PDCA model you know work, what are the various aspects of this plan, do, check and act model. Plan, first step. What you do here, you actually look at the various environmental aspect associated with any act or any activity that you are carrying out in a particular locality. You also look at the various legal uh, you know, angles associated with that say for example, coal. Coal is a very important natural resource and suppose in your locality there is a coal mine and coal mining is going on. We all know that coal mining should not be continued beyond a certain limit. There are several aspects of environment concerns are there and then of course, the you know safety issues related with land and various other aspects. So, we must see follow the rules associated with also the mining process. You know, I have just taken an example of mining, but it can be applied for various other aspects of natural resource management. Then comes your objectives, your targets and programs. Say for the example of mines I have given. So, you have a target right. Any mining company will have a target that how much uh, need to be extracted you know from the ground. But this all should be planned in accordance with certain standard to keep our environment safe. So, that the human life and the ecosystem does not come under any kind of danger. Once plan is done, then you go for doing it. What are the things and how you do that? See all the resources that you have at your disposal, you should utilize them responsibly. I mentioned it at the very beginning of this course that responsible utilization of natural resources is one of the key aspect of an efficient natural resource management regime. Now, authority when say some government uh, departments, some organizations who suppose own mining area or a mine, they also will have certain amount of responsibility because any authority that comes with certain responsibility. So, it is their duty to see to implement the certain aspects associated with environment management system. Competence, training, awareness of course, is uh, very important and these all those things you will be actually doing uh, during your actual ground work. Communication, documentation, you know periodical review, report and different kind of leaflet, control of documents, operational control and emergency preparedness and response. So, these are uh, some of the you know points uh, activities that will come in the second step that is do out of PDCA model. Then comes the next step check. So, once you carry out this set of uh, activities, then you go and check your system how it is work and that you do through a continuous monitoring, evaluation, measurement. Then you try to find out any kind of non-conformity, corrective actions, preventive measures that you take and control of records internal audits. These are some of the important aspects which comes under check you know step of PDCA model. And then finally, comes act means this is the step of action. So, there you actually 
you know carry out a management review of the entire system and activity and you see that how much your all this planning doing and checking exercises have finally you know help you to implement the ISO 14001 you know system or any ISO standard system as approved by any government of a particular area has been implemented appropriately. Now, let us look at the framework of EMS environmental management system. Environment any environment management system or EMS it has certain component on the basis of those components EMS work in any ecosystem. What are those? Environment policies any uh, location or place or country or state will have certain policies associated with environment. And when any company organization or group comes to work in any locality, the top management or authority of that particular group or organization is supposed to be responsible, committed to the regulatory compliance of the set of rules for proper environment management. And that those actually you know include all kind of pollution prevention, different kind of measurements to reduce the pollution, continuous improvement evaluation of the system as I just discussed in the previous slide. So, once you have this kind of policy on the basis of that within EMS framework one has to do a planning where you actually will identify the environmental interactions, then identify the legality, legal aspects and other requirements associated with that. Then you develop environmental you know objectives which are the thing that you would like to do in a particular area because location to location the type of natural resource uh, utilizations will be different. So, on that basis certain strategies will also differ from place A to place B. So, then you have targets and the programs in you know through which you actually try to achieve the goal. The goal is to have a uh, you know sustainable environment management system in place. After planning then you go for implementation and operation. In case of implementation operation as we discussed in the previous slide you actually define you know structure and responsibility of each individuals and each individual organizations responsible for that particular task. You establish a communication network procedures how to communicate between each layer of responsible people and authority document them carry out you know awareness program establish different kind of operational control and then implement emergency preparedness you know plan of actions and response. Once this is done then you go for checking as we discussed in the previous slide where you carry out largely the monitoring and evaluation aspect to check that how much actually it is following the standard that has been set at the first level. Once the checking is done and then you find that if there is any kind of gaps or any kind of corrections that could be carried out, you have to carry out that before you reach to the final you know review stage where top management will review the entire environmental performance. So, before reaching that during this process checking you can have minor corrections. So, in management review certainly it is kind of you know a kind of overall monitoring or evaluation of the status of implementation of an EMS in a ecosystem and that could be any kind of system farming ecosystem, wetland ecosystem, so any kind of forest. So, that is how you basically implement try to implement the EMS in a particular area. Now, what are the uses or benefits of having an environmental monitoring system and how actually they help in efficient natural resource management. As I said at the beginning that environment management system though they are the word natural resources is not mentioned, but remember that when we talk about EMS it has a direct link or implications on natural resource management as well. So, let us see that what are the benefits uh, of an environmental management system. It helps improving the environmental performance overall performance of any kind of ecosystem that we talk about. It enhances the compliance of the system 
towards a standard. Here we talk about ISO 14001. Pollution prevention, then resource conservation, new you know customers and market analysis because that will give you the extra future demand that might come in a particular ecosystem. Increase efficiency and reducing cost. Of course, if you increase efficiency, your you know cost of managing the system uh, expected to be going down. Enhanced employee model. So that is something you know you cannot create in a day or month or so, but it is a responsibility of the EMS system to look at also enhanced uh, model of the employee who are working within that particular ecosystem. Enhanced image with public regulators, investors, because these are the people who are the key players in that ecosystem where you are working. All right. Then comes employee awareness about environmental issues and responsibilities. Often you will find that in some of the organizations who are actually responsible for environmental management, they themselves are not aware about certain issues and aspect about environment. So, it is critically important that the individuals, um, individuals working in this kind of systems are well aware of the issues and they should also be made aware about their responsibility. Now, significance uh, of environment management system in countries like India or any other developing countries, it is bit different you know in developing countries and developed countries for various reasons. So, let us see that how EMS is important in developing countries like India. EMS have been introduced in developing nations, but the concept of management is very poor because it is not really management. Rather, it is kind of a responses to the environmental problem and somehow, you know, it takes care of the problem when it comes, arises, then it is being addressed. So, in developing country, EMS, environment management system is little bit you know kind of responsive kind of or reactive kind of work is being carried out. So, the principle of management at times is missing there. So, that is one aspect that we need to you know enhance more in EMS framework, the management aspect. So, there is a need to improve and understand the importance and significance of environment management system especially countries like, like us, where the economy is still growing and growing at a very high pace. So, we cannot afford any kind of, you know, environmental risk because that would be very, you know, disastrous for our, not only our environment, but also the, the development growth path that we are following. So, for the betterment of our own growth, it is important that we try to apply the environment management system in an appropriate manner. So, the management part which is little weak or poorer still in many parts of our country that needs to be taken care of. Also, you will find that the developing countries are at a chance of you know greater environmental risks for various regions, probably for our geographical locations, etc. I am talking about almost all the developing countries. So, they are uh, also having some natural uh, you know exposed to natural risk and these nations are where the industrialization and developmental projects are going on at the most. So, you see that the countries are already having certain uh, inherent environmental risk, but these developing countries are actually at the you know path of very speedy development growth. Industrialization is taking place, various kind of infrastructure development. So, the inherent risk or intrinsic risk plus this rate of growth. So, there of course, there is a chance of more risk in those kind of areas. So, we must have a very robust EMS system so that our own design development growth is not hampered 
because of this kind of risk which are already there in the system plus because of this fast you know plan of growth. So, then the thing is that we are actually at the you know threshold that we need to take care of our EMS in a very effective manner. As I again I repeat the management part of EMS need to be strengthened. And EMS significance of EMS in our society it actually need to be understood very clearly and to do that we need to do you know some kind of initiative and some kind of activities planned in our society and ecosystem. Selection of advisors, consultants and experts is one way to do that. Assessment of the current environmental situation, this also will tell you the effectiveness or significance of EMS. Development of realistic short term and long term plan. So, you have two sets of plan in hand. Plan which actually you know you can easily address within a very short period of time, short term plan and another is long term goal. So, these two things uh, need to be taken care of and then implementation and enforcement of potential you know solutions. So, even if you identify certain potential solution, the important matter is that how do you implement that and also enforce that solution into the uh, system that you are working with. Now, this uh, selection of advisors and consultants and experts is a critical step and this has to be you know done with a lot of care. The selection criteria you know should include various factors such as the consulted language skill, his experience and knowledge, uh, sincerity etcetera etcetera and his knowledge about the particular area, the location and also the person e expert or advisor should not be having any kind of bias or kind of you know prior opinion and agenda before getting into this kind of project or work. Then next uh, this assessment of the current environmental situation is also you know can tell you the efficiency or effectiveness of your EMS system. So, a comprehensive assessment prior to the development of any plan need to be made and the team along with the external advisor or consultant they should look some aspect before recommending any plan or action for the solution alright. So, I go back. So, here I was talking about that this is the some way that you can actually understand the effectiveness and significance of EMS and here we are talking one by one that how actually you can carry out these exercises. So, assessment of current environment situation is very very important. What actually you have to do? We have to do the study of our current status of our environment quality that will be our baseline. Then we should look at the you know governmental infrastructure for various regulation monitoring enforcement because within that government uh, setup many things will be taking place. So, we need to also understand that very carefully. Availability of public and industrial funds that need to be utilized for various activity because that idea will give you that how you design your course of actions and also different and other activities associated with environmental management. Next, the availability of trained or trainable personnel to plan, design, construct and effectively you know carry out this action. This is where often we find at the field level you will find the challenge. At the proper time to find a skilled person for a particular work you will see you will not find that and that's, that is why many times this kind of work related with natural resource management, environment management system get badly affected. So, we need to have a pool of trained skilled personnel. For that the preparation should start long back and it should be a continuous process, process of skill development for in, uh, natural resource management, environment management system should be a continuous process. So, that when the need arises you have a set of people who can actually carry out the work. The support of the society, the people, the government 
is very, very important for maintaining environment quality to manage the natural resources of any ecosystem because without the people's support, we cannot carry out a very effective or efficient environment management system and so the natural resource management system. Next, development of realistic short term and long term plans. Very important as I said that we should have in one hand short term plan which we can finish suppose within few months, a year or so and then we have a long term plan, couple of years. So, these two set of plan uh, should be envisaged, prepared through consolidated studies. So, once you know these kind of plans uh, are kind of ready and it is ready in your hand, then to carry out a very efficient EMS or NRM will be very, very easy. So, for plans to have a value for the society, for that particular ecosystem where you are working, they must be based on realistic and implementable ideas. So, we must know the place and the area and then think about certain realistic target, real and implementable ideas. And they must not be, you know, they, they must not be based on some other assumption. And that is why, you know, uh, consolidated study and knowledge about an area is very important. So, these plans, they must be based on social, economic, educational and political realities of the country, of the area where you are working. And the success of such plans will be determined by their relevance and appropriateness to the real condition of the ground. So, if your conceived idea or plan is made sitting far away from the area where actually uh, the plan will be implemented, I am sorry, there is a high chance that the plan will fail. So, we must be uh, very realistic and our plan whether short term or long term, it must be based on the real grounds situation. Often plans are used or abused you can say by you know politicians, stakeholders, different people from industry in developing countries and sometime also in, in developed countries. So, what happen is that sometime these initiatives activities get delayed for some unknown reason. Now, the unsuspecting public sector are often led to believe that the solution is close at hand because of these plans. But the problem can only be solved by their implementation, not by the planning, not by hiring consultations only, but the problem can only be solved by their proper implementation on the ground. And this fact is true for any country across the world, developing or developed world. So, this is also one aspect because we are working, we all national resource management specialists will be working in this society only. So, we must be aware of this real fact and accordingly devise the course of actions, so that your process implementation process or actions is not delayed due to some other external factors. Next, implementation and enforcement of potential solution exactly, this is what I just discussed in the previous point. Once your planning is done, it is the time for implementing it and this is the most critical step. So, you will find that uh, in recent uh, years, the concept of appropriate technology is often discussed in various forums, appropriate technology. So, the need for new and novel appropriate technology is not as important. However, the appropriate use of existing technology could be very, very important. I repeat it, the need for new and novel appropriate technology may not be as important when you compare with the appropriate use of the existing technology. So, we have, we have certain amount of technology, any society, you know, even including the indigenous technologies with the community. So, it is important to see that the appropriate use of those technologies which are already in the shelf with us is being carried out. Of course, 
appropriate technology off the shelf is equally important and for that research and innovation need to be carried out. So, next is uh, trends in EMS in India. So, if you look at that environment monitoring systems and its trends in our country, you will find that Indian economy is relatively young and our industrialization has started in a proper manner only after independence. Our government has adopted ISO 14000 for promoting worldwide standardization to facilitate international commerce. Now, this standardization as you know that it has enormous importance in the acceptance of certain industry standard. Many environmental laws have been enacted since 1964 along with creation of regulatory agencies to implement this kind of law. However, the command and control which we call C and C, this command and control approach which represents the traditional form of governance that has been adopted in our country has somehow not been successful in reducing the industrial pollution. Now, there are various reasons for that perhaps most of you might be knowing if you are following you know print and you know television and other kind of media. Environmental reporting by Indian corporations also lag significantly behind you know the corporations in developed countries. It is still in infancy. There are various reasons for this probably you know less pressure applied by our Indian companies by the stakeholders. So, our stakeholders need to become more proactive and these companies should be answerable to some of the queries generated by stakeholders, environmental groups, general public and importantly government. So, this kind of system need to be in place. Then EMS is also important to motivate the companies for meaningful environmental reporting, rewards for good quality of environmental reporting should be instituted, similar in line of you know rewards for good environmental performance by a company organization. Now, these kind of thinking and process need to be more frequent, visible, so that every in individual companies or corporates, industries, they automatically take this kind of system, blend it with their already existing different kind of management system within their organization. EMS should not be a kind of a standalone management system within an organization or industry or a company. So, that needs to be ensured. If you look at the various environmental initiatives in India, our National Council of Environmental Policy and Planning which was set up in 1972 which was later evolved to Ministry of Environment and Forest or MOEF in 1985 and finally to Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change recently in 2014. Under various initiatives, there are also CPCBs and SPCBs has been created, Center Pollution Control Board, State Pollution Control Board. Then the policy statement for abatement of pollution and the national conservation strategy and policy statement on environment and development were also brought out by MOEF in 1992. The environmental action program EAP another very important initiative formulated in 1993 to improve environmental services and integrating environmental considerations into development paradigm or programs. NGOs working in the field of environment did come up one as one of the you know conscious effort of the government. As per IPC articles 268, 277 and etc as mentioned here, these are all related with different aspect of environment had also been looked into and formulated. Formulation of National Environmental Policy or NEP in 2006 is another very important achievement or I would say milestone under environmental initiatives in India. Indian Green Building Council in developed in 2001 to adapt eco-friendly concepts to Indian industry. This Indian Green Building Council is very very important especially nowadays when most of the cities the metro cities are coming up with you know huge number of buildings office buildings 
and then houses. So, this Indian Green Building Council or IGBC which is developed in 2001 is actually responsible for managing these buildings in the line of you know keeping our environment benign. Mm -hmm.